Okay, <clears throat> here we go. All right, so I'm Danny Lamb, tech lead for the Islandor Foundation, and I am here to talk to you about complex workflows with content moderation. So this is one of those nice topics where I get to talk about something and um, we do not have to do anything in order to have complex workflows right now in Islandor A. It's all handled with contributed modules. Um, so first off, if, if we're gonna talk about workflows and content moderation, really um, it's all about revisions. So in Drupal parlance, um, a revision is analogous uh, to a version in Fedora. Um, you store a sequence of them in the database and you can use them to, to revert to a, to a previous state. Um, and it's important to note that uh, even though there are many revisions, people will only see one when they visit your site. And this is what's called the default revision. Um, so without content moderation, this is kind of what happens over the life cycle of some content. So you create some content and you slice a revision and you make some edits. And all of this is done against the most current revision. So in other words, the default revision is always the latest revision. And so everything is always done there. So people can see what you're doing if you're editing stuff, um, they're, they're one and the same. And so what if you wanna revise your work without affecting what your users see? Um, well, your content is currently published. Um, and you may think that by simply unpublishing your content in Drupal, you're free to edit as you would see fit and then just republish the content. Um, but unfortunately, because the default revision is always the most current one, while you're doing that editing, your users are gonna receive 404s. It's gonna look like the content isn't available because it's, it's unpublished. So hence content moderation. So um, with content moderation, after creating, editing, and then publishing your content, you can create a new revision that is unpublished, but users are still directed to the version before you started tinkering. So in other words, the default revision is no longer the latest revision. The default revision is always the latest published revision. And it's a, it's a key distinction. Um, but content moderation uh, does a whole lot more than that. The module does, does a ton. What if you want an editorial workflow? Um, so suppose that content creators need to be able to uh, request a review from their editor and editors need to be able to request more work. Um, and in the end, after some back and forth, you know, the content is eventually published. Um, and then also, you know, realistically speaking, at any point in time, you need to be able to create, like start this whole cycle over again so that you can iterate on the content. Um, and so content moderation lets you create these workflows by letting you create two different types of entities here. So you can have um, states, which are essentially different flavors of published and unpublished that it all boils down to whether or not something is published or unpublished, but you can have different variants of this to suit your needs. So um, kind of in the workflow I just described, uh, you would have a draft when the content creator is working on it. It would be in review when the editor is looking at it. And then when it's live, it's published. And then transitions, uh, you know, move content from one state to another. So this is when um, the editor says this needs work or the content creator says I need review or the editor finally says this is good, publish it. It's a transition that moves the content through these states. So the, the content moderation module, in addition to uh, kind of decoupling the latest revision from the latest published revision so that you're free to edit things while users still see, you know, quote unquote, stable content. In addition to that, uh, it provides a UI for creating and editing, managing these states and transitions. And it also gives you um, permissions for each of the transitions. So you can designate 
who can use them. It's actually pretty important. We'll, we'll touch on that in a minute here. Um, but so the, the user interface is available at admin, config, workflow, and then workflows is the module or is the, is the, the title that you click on. And the reason why it's called workflows and not content moderation is that these entity types are actually defined in a core workflow module and content moderation just provides the UI for it. Um, so that's why it doesn't say content moderation in the, in the name there. But as you can see, I've, uh, I have built out that entire editorial workflow um, from my example slide. This is it. There's three states, draft, interview, and published, and then there's three transitions. Um, needs work, needs review, and publish. And it's actually incredibly straightforward to use this. Um, you know, like certainly there's a learning curve as there is with everything, but if you kind of just open up the UI and start bumbling around, um, you'll sort it out pretty quickly what you need to do. Um, so just as an example here, I'll walk you through some of the, the other screens in the UI. So you can create states, um, basically just give it a name. Um, and then really you can say whether this is a published state or an unpublished state. Um, and that's really all you'll ever mess with. There is uh, another spot under there for default revision. So um, I've played with this for quite a bit. I've still not actually figured out the real use for this. Um, whether or not you would make something a default revision, all of the published states become default. It's like that checkbox is automatically checked if you check publish. And so really designating something as a default revision would only really work out if you were doing some kind of internal only workflow where the content is never published. And then this would be um, useful, but that just doesn't really seem to fall in line with any of our, our use cases right now. Um, you can also create transitions, again, give it a label basically. And then from there, there's like a many to one mapping where you say, here's the, the from states, you know, and then these all lead to, and then you pick a single, a single state. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. That's, that is the UI for, for building workflows in Drupal. Um, earlier, I mentioned that each transition gets its own permission. And so this is super important because you're going to be creating um, different roles for all of these people. So um, in my example, I had a content creator and an editor. Here I'm just saying that the content creator is like an authenticated user, just anyone who signs in. Um, and then I made a special role um, for editors. And so you can lock down essentially each transition um, per role. So the editor is in my example, the only one able to use the published transition and then all of the other transitions uh, need re needs review needs work uh, the authenticated user can do that so they can say hey i need review from the editor or if they see something and they see it needs work then they can kick it back to the draft state and they can say no this still this still needs work like you're allowed to basically say that yourself um, but in doing this then when you actually go to kick the content around between the states in the little block that shows up above your content, now this actually locks down on the drop down um, what states you're allowed to transition to. Um, and it's, it's pretty effective. So you can move stuff around um, from state to state and well, that's great. And while something may actually eventually get published, um, nothing really is actually happening when you're transitioning around between those states. Um, but, but you can quite easily react to transitions. And, and so um, the documentation, or should I say blog posts, you know, et cetera, that are, that are out there are all about using the rules module in order to do this. And we'll talk more. We could certainly use context to do it like we do with the rest of Island Dora 8. Um, but rules give this to you out of the box. So it's at least worth exploring. Um, and I'm going to show you uh, how you can basically respond to events here uh, throughout this workflow. So um, rules, if you enable it, um, it has a user interface that's actually in the same category as the content moderation UI. So it's admin config workflow, and then it's just rules. And uh, this is a screenshot of the user interface. This is like as if you had 
essentially you know nothing at this point but what you're going to do is simply add a reaction rule and what i'm going to try to do is set it up well what i did um, is uh, set it up to notify a user when content has been moved from draft to in review to notify the editor that it needs to be in review um, so i added a reaction rule for that when you click add a reaction rule you can choose an event important thing here is just this after updating a content moderation state which does not really you know at face value say hey i'm transitioning content between between states it doesn't really scream that let's say but that's what you pick um and then i gave it a label so that i, I just so i know what it is so this one's notify for for review um, and then once that's set up it's it's surprisingly similar to context although um and i'm being nice here way clunkier so you can add a condition this one's called data comparison so i'm actually just going to check what the moderation state is and there's this big long data selector here that looks like gibberish um, in that first text field but there's actually an autocomplete to help you navigate through that mess um, but essentially I just say, and this took me a while, this was the hard part, was what do I type into this first text field in order to get it to go? That was really the only difficult part. Um, and once I figured out that this content moderation state dot moderation state dot value, once I realized that was the deal, um, everything else fell into place. So I'm just saying, make sure that this is the same as in review. So it's down there at the, at the bottom. Basically you just give it the machine um, name of your state. And that's it. So now I have a rule that checks to see if content is in review. Um, and then I added an action to react to it. And there are lots of actions that are available through rules. The, the one that I'm using right now is just the basic system one to um, basically set up a little splash uh, notification the next time the page is loaded. So this one just says this is ready for review. Um, and then you can tell it if you wanted to have like a warning or error, or, you know, so it can be green or red or, or yellow, the exclamation point. Um, and that's, that's it. So if you go through and here's that little uh, um, block to change the moderation state that I was talking about. If I take something and I move it from draft to in review, then I get this nice little notification um, at the top. And that's it. So that's a really kind of dumb, example of reacting to a workflow transition um, but it it certainly can be expanded upon and you can certainly do more useful things um, so you know really you should let drupal work for you um, and you can really automate anything rules can do which is a ton so you know rules can edit content it can you know create a new node or something it can create new content it can update existing content um, I had it splash a, a notification, but you can also have it, you know, if you set up PHP properly, you can have it send out an email. You can even have it send out an email to everyone of a, of a particular role. And so what would have been really useful is I could say, hey, why don't you just email blast all of the editors as soon as someone says content is ready for review, right? And so there's just, there's just a ton of possibilities out there. And there's a lot of, you know, integrations with rules out there. So there's just, really just lots of opportunity to do uh, new things, lots of room for innovation here. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm cognizant of the time here, I'm gonna be running out soon. Um, but I would just say, it's awesome. What you can brick together with core modules and contrib modules is incredibly powerful. Um, but it's always got a little slant and it's Drupal and there's kind of opinions there and you've got to work with the opinion. So I say it's awesome, but just still not perfect. Um, the first one is that we really need integration for our custom actions. So we do a lot of stuff using actions. The actions essentially are what connect us to the services. Steven talked about that uh, in his presentation. And so we have a time like indexing content in Fedora or indexing content in the triple store, or deleting content, all of this stuff, generating derivatives, all of that is done with actions. And so we really just need to find a way to shim those actions into rules. 
Um, if we do that, then you could have really powerful workflows where you could do stuff and the content's there and a user uploads it and it kind of goes into mediation. And then when you say done, you know, publish, maybe then it indexes the content into Fedora or something like that. There's just a whole lot of more opportunities that we would have um, if we got that, that full integration in. The other thing is that the rules, user experience, the user interface, it's off. Um, you know, when we were first developing Islandor 8, back when it was 7x, 2x, um, and even for a while when it was 8, we actually did use rules, and we moved on for a couple of reasons. One is that rules was having a hard time actually releasing for D8. Um, and the other one is that the user experience is pretty clunky. You got to know what you're doing. You got to know what you're typing. Everything is done with this autocomplete, but that doesn't really mean it's intuitive what you're autocompleting on or what you're looking for. And, you know, we chose context because context let us actually build out forms and use widgets and use things other than essentially just text fields because that's really all the rules forms are is you're just kind of punching in text and you need to know the machine names of everything and stuff like that. Um, and so another possibility for us is to actually just recreate the event that happens in rules and then just integrate that in context. And then we already have um, our custom actions and stuff like that. So there's kind of two potential paths forward there for us um, to get that full integration. Um, and this is the other thing maybe to, to watch out for. Um, Node and media publishing is disconnected. This isn't really a workflow issue. This is just an Islandor at eight as it is right now kind of issue. And in some ways, that's really good to have that freedom for you to be able to do things independently. But sometimes you would expect that if you unpublished a node, that the media would also get unpublished or, or, or vice versa, that you publish something, you make it public, then you would expect everything else that was under lockdown to also become published. And so you just need to be cognizant of that for the time being and just make sure you set up extra rules in order to like, you know, turn on all the media and stuff like that um, as well. So, so there, there's my, so it's not all just tech lead hand wavy goodness there. There's, there's a good dose of reality. But um, again, it's just crazy what you can do um, using all third party tools here. So, all right, I'll, I'll cut it off there because I have a tendency to, to go on and on. Um, and I'll just yield to the floor for questions, but thanks for your time. All right, first question up. Uh, I assume there is also a way to have a list of publications with a specific state only visible for a s users with a specific rule with views. Yes, sure. Um, users with a specific role are allowed to view content by a certain state. I'm sure you could use a views filter to do that. Absolutely. Um, permissions by term is also essentially that. So if you were to tag things as part of your workflow, um, then you could latch on to permissions by term to do that as well. This next one is not a question, but more of a comment. Uh, instead of using a page level message, it would be useful to be able to allow a reviewer to annotate a specific field. For example, to tell an editor exactly what to do slash fix. Yeah, yes. I mean, I'm giving like the dumbest example I can possibly give, um, but if you were to email and stuff like that, uh, you could certainly script out a message that you could say like, check what fields were changed and then here's what changed or, or something like that. Um, but, but yes, that certainly would be much more useful then <laughs> than the dummy example I just gave. 